Glad to be with you tonight. We're going to be talking about the spirit of rejection, how to overcome it, how to battle such a spirit. Uh, this is something that I personally have experienced in my own life, having come from a broken home in Birmingham, Alabama, and a very deprived section. Uh, I felt rejected by my society. I felt rejected by my family at times because I became a believer and they rejected my beliefs. I was rejected by uh, people who were more athletic than I was because I was more service oriented. And so uh, rejection started early in my life. Uh, I was the fifth child, uh, probably not expected, not planned for, uh, but I grew up feeling loved by my mother, but not loved by my father in particular. And then I also came to realize just about 10, 15 years ago that possibly my father was not my birth father. That was quite a revelation, which kind of explained why I felt rejected by uh, my father and my daddy when I was growing up. Uh, my mother shared a few years ago that uh, she possibly had myself and the brother just before me uh, with another man. So uh, that explains some of the rejection I felt uh, with from, from my daddy growing up. Uh, I also felt rejected by people who were very wealthy and uh, well cultured because I was in an ignorant, very poor neighborhood. We often moved and had to have uh, uh, chances to just get away to a new apartment someplace because we did not have the finances. So financially, I felt very rejected by society. Uh, in many other ways, I feel rejected, but primarily, uh, I did not feel loved uh, or appreciated by anyone in my neighborhood, my family, my school, until I met a lady across the street from where I lived as a child. I was about eight years of age and she accepted me with many other children in the neighborhood who came to her house on Saturday mornings for a couple of hours. And she had wonderful refreshments. She had uh, uh, songs, memory work, and prizes. And I became um, achievement oriented uh, to get her praise or acceptance, to get the prizes, get the nice desserts. And so I began to feel accepted someplace finally in my life at the age of eight. My um, teacher then uh, was an unmarried woman and she told the story of Jesus week after week in different flannel graph lessons. And while I was there listening to the story of Jesus' passion, crucifixion, and resurrection one, one Saturday, I felt convicted of my sins and uh, saw her in her yard a few days later and then I I prayed with her the sinner's prayer and accepted Jesus Christ. And I can honestly say for the first time in my life that I no longer felt completely rejected. I felt that I was accepted by God, even as I was, even though I had sinned a lot, I had smoked, I had cursed, I had stolen many things as a child. Uh, I felt God lift all those burdens and accept me as I was and as I would become by the leading of his Holy Spirit. Uh, rejection, I believe is very common in most people in our society because they're always trying to live up to someone else's standards. And when they don't meet the standards of appearance, maybe they're not as attractive, maybe they're not the right height, they're too tall, too short, too thin, too fat. And so they feel this rejection from the peer group. They feel a rejection from others, even teachers, uh, quite often reject students who are not as attractive or not as uh, encouraging intellectually to the, the teacher's desire to teach. But I was very blessed to have teachers in my public school experience who really accepted me and saw potential in me. They saw me as a diamond in the rough. And so that spirit of rejection could not break me down with my relationship with my primary teachers. And that helped me. And then as I became uh, the Christian, uh, the lady who led me to the Lord, Margaret Weaver, told me I need to go to a church, find a church home and be baptized and be discipled into uh, maturity in Jesus Christ. And so I found a large Baptist church and there I found people who accepted me, who mentored me, who counseled me, who guided me, who loved me, 
and provided many of my needs all the way through elementary school, high school, and into college, including scholarships and all types of opportunities for travel and ministry gifting. And so therefore, the spirit of rejection, I believe, is a demonic spirit that keeps people from reaching their full potential as a person, as a Christian, if they are a Christian. And many people think, well, I accepted Christ, I'm a Christian now, but they do not get freedom from a spirit of rejection. I have known hundreds, if not thousands, of Christians in my life who still struggle with rejection. And um, they feel inferior in one way or another, living in the shadow of a sibling, a brother, a sister, or a neighbor, or someone that's related to them. Uh, the spirit of rejection has uh, many characteristics, and some of these thoughts today are going to be sh shared from Kurt Landis, uh, Landry, Kurt Landry Ministries, and he has been serving God for years in, particularly in uh, identifying uh, spiritual problems and delivering people from these problems. Uh, first point he makes, and I share, is that the spirit of rejection is a lie from the enemy, a lie. Uh, when you understand that the spirit of rejection lies about God's love and your place in his kingdom and your worth in God's view, then uh, you are defeated because you're believing the lie rather than the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one cometh unto the Father but he that uh, comes to him by the way of the, Jesus Christ, his sacrifice, his blood on the cross. Uh, so we need in this study of a spirit of rejection, how to battle it, how to overcome it. We need to know how the spirit of rejection is manifested in each person's life, uh, where the spirit of rejection comes from, and how to battle the spirit of rejection with the guidance in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Uh, how does the spirit of rejection manifest in a person's life? Uh, first of all, this has also been identified with uh, creating an orphan spirit where a person, a human, a boy, a girl, man or woman, older person, younger person, um, feels like they have been abandoned, they've been cut off. They're an orphan. And God wants us to know that he is our father who loves us, who wants to accept us into his family by the son's blood on the cross of Calvary. And we no longer are an orphan. We have a family. We have a heavenly father. We have brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, Jesus is regarded as God, but he's also regarded in the scripture as our elder brother, that we have someone who accepts us into the family. There are seven manifestations of the spirit of rejection shared by uh, Kurt Landry. First, uh, the person becomes very despondent. There seems to be no words, no encouragement that can be spoken over this person to set them free from the feeling of being rejected. Uh, you can often see this in a person's countenance. Uh, they don't want to lift their head. They do not want to make eye contact. They are more withdrawn. And except with a few people, intimate friends or family members, they feel somewhat comfortable to be themselves. But even with regular family and friends, people become despondent and withdrawn. Secondly, you feel left out of conversations as if you are an observer unable to interact. Uh, I don't put a lot of stock in dreams. I have dreams occasionally. It's interesting when I do have dreams that are very vivid, in the course of the dream, I see the happening in the dream from these eyes looking out uh, to see the whole thing from my eyes. Then I often see it from someone in the dream looking to see me and the others. And then I often see a full view back, like I'm looking at a stage production. And uh, that particular threefold perspective gives me some understanding of the dream. But in real life, we don't always have that reality. We don't have that understanding of looking through our eyes, through someone else's eyes, looking through um, a proscenium view from a stage. So we feel like we are left out. And uh, the devil is eager to show us, you know, we're not chosen on a sports team. We're not chosen uh, as a member of a choir or a soloist. We're not 
part of a dramatic group. We're not part of any type of organization. We're not chosen to uh, be selected in high school or college in some elite group or special group. A third reason a person might feel the spirit of rejection is they feel like life's opportunities have passed by and it's too late to do anything about it. You find this particularly after people are 30, 40 years of age. Uh, they have not fulfilled their dreams. They have not met the someone that they hope to meet. They have not accomplished the goals and objectives that they have chosen to reach in their lives. And so therefore they feel that they have missed life. Life has passed by and there's no hope for any future. Fourth, a person with a spirit of rejection uh, feels rejected if not recognized for their accomplishments by those in authority. This happens quite often when someone really succeeds in some activity event, sporting event, or uh, some type of activity, and the people in the leadership, those in the authority, the teacher, the coach, uh, the director, uh, the parent, the relative, does not give adequate recognition of that accomplishment. Uh, number five, a person with a spirit of rejection feels the spirit of envy setting in as they begin comparing their situation with the situation of others. And so therefore, not realizing that they are being egocentric and centering on their own ego, their own ideas and whatever, uh, but they come to realize that they are not being recognized for their accomplishments. Number six, this feeling of envy and comparison partner with rejection. And they tell us that uh, we were not given a fair chance in life. We grew up in poverty. Uh, we grew up in a broken home, like in my situation. My parents were divorced when I was about five years of age. A uh, person with spirit of rejection feels like they were maybe raised in the wrong culture, the wrong country. Uh, the wrong gender sometimes, uh, the wrong uh, academic level. There's so many areas that a person can feel rejected and the devil and the demons that work with the devil reinforce this by not recognizing that we are special, we're unique, we're in God's plan. Number six, um, this, this idea of number six is that we didn't get a fair chance. We were cheated. Uh, we, were with, we were held back. And uh, we know we're better than somebody else, but they got ahead. Maybe they had influence of their family, their wealth, their circumstance, their neighborhood. Uh, and then number seven, you feel the need to prove yourself while at the same time feeling you can never measure up. And so this person keeps striving, persevering, being persistent to, to reach the goal, to be accepted, uh, to be honored. And yet they just feel like they try and try and try and they never measure up. And in my years of counseling hundreds, if not thousands of people, I've heard this over and over, uh, that they just never were accepted into the organization, the group, the church, the youth group, the team, whatever it might be. Uh, as you hear this discussion tonight, do you resonate with any of the things that I've mentioned so far? Can you identify with any one or more of those characteristics of a spirit of rejection? 